I was an intern for Hype Williams. That's how I got in. I drew storyboards for Hype. It was a good experience. I got to see a lot, learned a lot. When people ask me, how'd you get to work with Hype? I say persistence. I used to walk everywhere with a backpack with a VHS tape in it. You should have it on your phone and you show anyone and everyone. My father's Swiss, my mother's from Trinidad. I grew up in Toronto. My father's influence on me was with the European sensibility, and then my mother with the conservative West Indian approach to a lot of things. And then Toronto being a big major North American city, hip hop being there as well, and having those things all come together, just built this uh, situation. Trouble. I really appreciate the hip hop that happens here. It, it hasn't caught on in North America yet. You know when you hear some British hip hop, you know that's them. So the Leo story I like, the one I like the most, is we're shooting the video for DMX called Back in One Piece. And there's a part in the video where you see her, she's in Project Stairwell. So in between takes, she would just sit on an apple box by a door. And at one point, some kid opens, some little kid opens up the door and is like, Aaliyah is, standing, <laughs> Aaliyah is sitting on a box outside of his door. And she has a little conversation with the kid. I'm sure he tells that story every day, man. You know what I mean? Like, that's probably his repertoire. He tells it and his friends all roll their eyes. Oh, fuck. Even the bad day turns into an interesting story. Like, you know what I mean? Nothing that bad. Even those stories are interesting stories. I caused a riot in Harlem once. Um, Why Clef, Jean, Busta Rhymes and Loon, Pussycat Dolls Remix. Uh, well, just when video cameras were just getting really uh, high tech. I'm like, hey, let's shoot this with video cameras. Like we're just shooting this video with, you know, and we, since it's with video cameras, we don't need permits. So we just showed up in Harlem with the, why, all the Wyclef's cars, monster trucks, sports cars, all that. We just showed up and started shooting a video with Busta and Loon when, when you know, like, this is years and years and years ago when Busta was Busta, you know what I mean? And we caused chaos uptown, like chaos. It was pretty bad. But like I said, even in that bad situation, it was still pretty fun. Not for everybody in Harlem that day. <laughs> the crew, we've always been safe, at least when I'm shooting. There's crew and this, and there's a lot of a lot of things happening. When I was in Arizona, I shot a video for Akon called Ghetto, and we had a little gang fight on set. One guy got stabbed. If you look at that video, at the end of the video, there's a bunch of guys in green bandanas and stuff and they're burning a rag. And one guy lifts up his shirt and he sh you see he has blood on him. He just got stabbed. And the rag they're burning is from the Crips that they beat up. Well, the moral of the story is don't invite rival gangs to be in the same video. I do wish we traveled more, especially now that the money's not what it was, but there was a time when we are spending so much money, we could have easily picked up and gone to like China and shot on the Great Wall of China, or we could have we gone anywhere, and we didn't. We are like, and hey, we're gonna shoot another party video. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we really kind of ran around the same circle, which was unfortunate. I don't think we fully exploited what we had the possibility of doing. I was fortunate enough to come in and make music videos in this really crazy time when MTV played music videos. There was a lot of money in the economy. Like we, were, we had this big economic bubble. It wasn't even like a normal economy. We had excess of money, but just really, really big. Everyone was competing to make big, exciting, entertaining music videos. It wasn't just, you know, stand in front of the wall. It was big sets and big, everyone, that was the competition. You know, we overspent, so now there's underspending. The shift has gone to YouTube and the budgets have dropped, but now there's digital technology. So everything is really changing and it's just beginning to settle, but not completely. I think Kanye is one of those guys. He makes art all the way through. He, and he, he respects the power of the music video. He's concerned with the music video and uh, puts a pretty high bar up there. So pound for pound, when you look at his body of work, he's definitely done much stronger work than maybe anybody else has. If I could pull any artist from the past, I would get Bob Marley and Jimi Hendrix to do a record together and then shoot the video. 
my advice for a kid that wants to shoot music videos is to get out there and shoot. It's all about passion and proactivity. Get your friend that has a song, like y'all should be doing it. You have a song, you have a camera, go make something. Like what you're, what you're capable to do now with a computer and a, and a camera is insane. One of my favorite music videos is definitely uh, Freedom by George Michael. I think that's one of the best videos ever made. Execution, lighting, everything about it is just perfect. But, you know, that's David Fincher, that's serious. The power of music is still massive. And the power and uh, recognizability of a um, musical star. It's the only piece of entertainment that fits in all other entertainment. You go to a sporting event, they play the music. You go to a movie, they're gonna play the music. You go to, you know what I mean? It's always around you. You play the music by yourself. You, it's just all around you. I can't really speak to where what this all means, but I'm definitely observing. I haven't been part of it all, seeing the really big changes. All right, y'all, Director X, we're out of here. Check me out, directorxfilms.com. I Director X on Twitter, I Director X on Instagram. And that's what's up. Subscribe to SBTV to keep updated on the latest releases and check out more of our videos below.